What is up guys? Welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we're going to look at something that you might have seen, might not have heard about, but probably slipped through the cracks. It's something small, but might make a big difference depending on what you're trying to do. So what we're going to do is look at motion blur. So it's very specific, I will say, because it doesn't apply to everything. It actually only applies to exports and it's a specific export option. It's something I probably covered in my export options video. Check that out too, but we're actually going to look at motion blur in depth when it comes to this video. So if at any point in this video, which, you know, hope you do learn something, <laughs> please demolish that like button. You know, maybe if you just happen to like the video too, not sure, please do that. Demolish that button for me. Okay. Getting into it now. We are looking at a basic scene and you know, I, I have this road here. It, I've got lights, whatever, doesn't really matter, but we want to look at motion blur. And so where do we, where do we even find motion blur? Well, that's actually going to be in the export options. If I come into really any of these options, but I click more, there's my motion blur. I can turn that on or off and whether it's on or off will in some ways drastically affect how things look in my image. I mean, you're all familiar with motion blur in that any movie you've seen, there's motion blur, you know, as the camera moves or something, there's blur. And as things move and streak across the screen, there's blur. And so that's something we're going to end up adding when it comes to our actual scene and not so much our scene, more our exports, because again, it's in the export settings. So if I turn this on here, it has no effect as to what we see in the image in the viewport here as we're working. So that's something to, to be aware about as well. So if I come over here and I just add a video, let's go ahead and just add a video here and I go to export the video. I actually don't see it here, which is a bit unfortunate. You know, I kind of hoped we would be able to see it here, but um, just like image, we have panorama and we actually do see motion blur there. So this is for still images. So you're getting that still image and then boom, you're getting that extra motion blur. So I'm, I've got a bunch saved off that we're going to look at that are similar to this scene right here. But I, what I do want to work with is just you know, with you looking at different ways that we can introduce uh, motion blur and then how it's affecting us. So uh, here we go. We're going to look at this a couple of ways. So I'm going to end up changing the speed of some of these vehicles that are traveling on this path because that is heavily dependent on you know how fast they're going depends on how you know the type of blur that we get whether we get more blur or less blur and so i'm gonna take my image you know somewhere around here um just looking straight down the road and you know really not, nothing weather wise really matters and if you're wondering about wind i i tried to work with wind and i can't get a lot of things with wind um maybe a flag you know like moving in the wind that might be the best thing that you could uh, show the motion if you have wind that's crazy high speeds but uh, overall the vegetation doesn't move like you don't get trees like swaying <laughs> um, so we don't have that kind of motion like little leaves will move um, but you know that's not enough motion to introduce the blur that we might be looking for when it comes to something like this a road um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another image with this and I just want to make sure that I have parallelism on. Um, let's turn depth of field on. Uh, I'll end up focusing on you know, just somewhere in the road down here. That's probably good. So as the cars get further away, they'll be blurred out. Again, I don't really care about uh, most of most of the time of day and all that stuff. So that's not a huge deal. Also, the background doesn't really matter. Lighting's not a big deal. Um, so let's go ahead and export this. And again, my cars are just so we know my cars are going at uh, 10 miles an hour. So very slow. So I am going to go ahead and export this. And whenever it's exported, we can then take a look at uh, what we get as far as the motion of the cars. OK, let's go ahead and export that. And so looking at this image, you know, immediately I see a bunch of vegetation, which I don't care about. but. Um, not much motion blur, mainly because I don't have a car like real close to the camera and it's just kind of the luck of the draw. There's no real way of controlling that. Um, I will re-export it again, but before I do that, I want to make sure that we are working with something a bit different in that I want to introduce some motion blur so we can look at it. So let's, let's put these cars at 25 miles an hour. Um, export this again. When this is exported, we'll start to compare them and I'm going to in increase the speed and we'll get to a point where it's really obvious that, yeah, we are actually playing with some motion blur and really see what it looks like. So again, here's my first photo and I'm going to move to the second photo and we're going to take a look at it. 
So <laughs> immediately you can see the difference. So here's this car, <laughs> um, and here's that car. You can see the motion blur, and it's pretty good. You know, I'm actually really impressed with this. I, it's a bit unnatural looking because it's got a bit dis distorted looks, but that's kind of what motion blur does. I really like the blur of this car. Um, and you can see there's significantly less blur, if almost no blur of these cars because you know they're not really moving that quickly um, in perspective, whereas this car is really moving in perspective quickly towards us and then past us. So it looks pretty good. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'll up the speed one more time but I also want to introduce something else. If you've looked at a previous video of mine, um, we actually looked at, and we'll put this speed at, you know, let's say uh, 40, you know, really significant speed. Actually, let's do 30, 30, 35, that's fine. Um, if you looked at a previous video of mine, we have we actually looked at materials, and <laughs> materials specifically when it comes to the speed of materials, which sounds real dumb, real stupid, um, if you don't know what that is at all, please check that video out. It's going to be really helpful and at least get you up to this point. Um, so, but in the scale of every material that I can find within Twin Motion, uh, there's a more option, but then there's also the speed option. And by default, there's zero because the material you see on the ground, on whatever surface it's applied to, doesn't move, and you may not want it to. And in general, you probably don't want it to. <laughs> so, at this point, what I'm going to do is actually introduce some movement to this material, some speed to this material, making these value not zero, so we can see the movement. And I wanted, this is going to be a, the first time I'm testing it out, but I wanted to make sure I do that with you um, to see if the material speed has any factor when it comes to getting motion blur and, and seeing that speed when you end up exporting. My guess is yes, because it's a physically moving item, but I could be completely wrong. So <laughs> when we add this value, to speed we can see the road is I guess you could say it's physically moving it looks like it's moving and so I want to go ahead and put this maybe 1.5 really get some look some <laughs> some contrast here and so what I want to do is hopefully you know if we're lucky we can get some motion blur coming from the speed of the material like the fact that there's speed applied to the material um, <laughs> that would be weird um, but it would make sense when it comes to how twin motion seems to work if it's a physically moving object it's going to have motion blur so we will see so what i'm going to do is uh, with the cars moving a little faster i'm going to end up exporting this now once again and we will see what we get you know there there's my shot so we're going to go ahead and see what we get so when we look at the next image you know yeah we can see the nice motion blur from this car but uh, <laughs> i don't see it from this concrete material this asphalt material i don't know I'm not sure what that is so Let's see, you know, obviously it's still moving. I'm going to try this one more time, but I'm going to like really up the speed here. I don't expect it to have an impact. Um, so it's, <laughs> it is hauling. Um, I don't know. I'll even take it as far as rotating it 180 degrees. So it's coming towards us. <laughs> we'll see. So we should have a very blurry looking road if this is actually going to work. So again, I'll try this one more time. <laughs> and looking at this last one, <laughs> I don't actually see it, you know, the the cars blurs really great, but <laughs> the material, I don't see it, it doesn't, there's no blur. Um, I can see that between these two material, or two uh, images, the material itself moves, so it might be that, <laughs> between these three actually it moves, so between these, it might be that it literally doesn't capture the motion blur, and that's my guess, because it's a flat flat surface i guess a flat material it's not capturing the actual blur it's just capturing the movement and not necessarily the movement but literally where it ends up you know where that uh, material based on the speed and whatever ends up in the shot it's going to just render right there that actual moment uh, which well you know i guess what do we expect you know we can't expect everything uh, not that i'd actually want that to happen to work I, that seems a bit weird that if, if it works so this seems a little more natural um but uh, i will say i'm pretty sure like almost 100 percent sure that if you export a video and you have the uh, actual material moving like we do here then the video will absolutely capture that and you know there's kind of built-in blur in the fact that i had this moving so fast but <laughs> regardless you know uh, i have this other shot which is pretty cool um and it's you know 
the weather, and this is how I tested out the weather, but honestly, the weather does nothing. You know, it's really, the only thing we're capturing as far as the motion is actually the cars. And just to prove that, um, it, this will be the thumbnail image, but the weather, if we come into here, we have, I have the the wind maxed out. It's just absolutely just hauling, you know. And, you know, the re direction obviously doesn't matter, but I'm just so surprised that uh, wind doesn't seem to impact it. Um, but with that said, I want to try one other mm -hmm. thing, and that's actually putting a flag in. So let's go ahead and search flag. And once I put this flag in, I, I like to think this would have a giant impact, and we can immediately see that, you know, obviously the wind is working. Um, but I'm going to come in here to, you know, look at that. That's ridiculous. Um, coming back into the wind settings, um, we can probably get an idea that, you know, it, it's obviously going to, to make an effect. Um, so fixing the location, the, the direction of the wind, we can probably see some uh, pretty good looking blur. And so I'm going to export one image for us to look at and see if we do in fact get some blur out of this uh, wind sock, I guess. Um, the main thing here is that, you know, it's going to be hard to see because it, it's really from what I can tell, the amount of movement. And so can I get a decent amount of movement from it? You know, it looks pretty steady there. So I, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and try this flag. That, that, that's better. You know, <laughs> I think I like that a bit more. And so we'll go ahead and get rid of this little wind sock thing and we'll deal with this flag. And it might be that the wind is so strong that <laughs> I, I'm just not seeing the flapping that I would expect to see. You know, obviously as I change this, I can make it flap myself, which <laughs> I won't get to do once I export an image, but um, it might just be that we need to have uh, the wind speed a little lower to get a little bit more of that look out of the flag. So I will export this and we'll take a look at this. Okay, so this is just kind of the way it is. You know, I've got a flag here and, you know, we can see that it's, doing something in the wind. You know, if I zoom in here, it's not a lot of blur there uh, because there's not a lot of movement, but this next image will clearly show that there's blur going on with these cars. Like it looks pretty good. I like that. Um, but you know, minimal, if no uh, blur there with, with the flag, just cause it's not moving that much, but, um, uh, don't know, you know, I think that's just kind of the way it is the way we're, we're stuck with that. And you know, that's okay. So really that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we looked at really everything, uh, <laughs> motion blur and that we can see that in all of our exported images or panoramas um, it would apply all the same it does not work with material speed clearly um, but objects physical objects moving work pretty well like cars you know this flag in theory would or you know should work or technically it is working it's just so hard to see because it's small whatnot um, so this cars probably one of the best things is <laughs> cars you know so try and introduce that uh, weather unfortunately doesn't work either but cars, something like that. If you want to do that, it really does add a bit more liveliness to your, your still images, because that's what we get still images or panoramas, nonetheless, still images. So again, that will do it for this video. We looked at motion blur. If you did happen to learn something, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. And you know, that will do it. Have a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.